A rash of Ebola virus disease in West Africa, an epidemic of the deadly strain that has made its way across to the United States and Spain since it originated in Guinea in December 2013, has a number of countries on alert, including Belize. It is not entirely clear how the outbreak initially started. While there have been no cases diagnosed locally, the Ministry of Health has already begun the process of preparing for an eventuality should there be an outbreak. Ebola is a disease that is transmitted by body fluids. It's not transmitted by casual contact, but essentially body fluids that include blood, semen, saliva, urine, feces are the principal mode. The pattern that is emerging is that um, caregivers and healthcare workers seem to be the people most at risk. How did Ebola get into the population? It got into the population through exposure to dead animals that um, were hosts for this virus or people eating uncooked um, game in those countries. And the game includes monkeys, it includes shrew and some other rodents. As of last Wednesday, the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control, and local governments from affected countries including Liberia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, Senegal, as well as the United States and Spain, have collectively reported a little under 7,500 suspected cases. Of that tally, there have been 3,439 deaths. However, the number of laboratory confirmed fatalities vary. Our population needs to know the high-risk areas where um, Ebola is, and it is advisable that um, unessential travel isn't done to those areas. For people who need to travel, then the advice is that they have to be mindful of people who have Ebola and limit their contact with those persons. If anybody from Belize travel to any of the mentioned countries and believe that they are at risk, they, they have a duty to really report to us that um, travel, that travel itinerary, so that we can take the appropriate steps. While those procedures may be clinical in nature, Director of Health Services Dr. Michael Pitts says that the line of attack in preventing a sudden occurrence from spreading to Belize is multi-sectoral. The approach to Ebola is one that involves several sectors, but clearly we need to have the airport authority on board with us because we believe if Ebola is to come to us, it's more than likely to come through that route. Um, we also have to pay attention to the border points because that is our frontier. So we could see that we need to have airport authority, immigration on board with us, and of course, um, tourist industry, etc., etc. Why I say tourist industry? Because to a large extent, they will be very familiar with the itinerary of visitors to our country. And if they can be aware of the risky countries and could inform public health about those travelers who come from risky countries, then we could take appropriate steps. That course of action, to whatever degree, seemingly lacks a defined system. The aforesaid concern, say health officials, is duly noted. I would concede that at this point, and it, um, it, it has been under discussion as to how we strengthen the surveillance system at the points of entry throughout this country in reference to the Ministry of Health being a major responder and with the idea that we would be able to detect, assess, and notify as needs be. But what if Ebola does find its way to Belize? Is the Karahishna Memorial Hospital medically prepared to deal with a crisis situation? We will identify isolation areas in our hospitals to deal with this matter. In fact, um, our discussion is that um, in doing so, we have to be mindful of the other healthcare needs. And so we are thinking that if we may not want to jeopardize, for example, the main hospital with isolation. If you notice, 
most of the Ebola cases end up in an ICU. We have one ICU at Carl Hushner. We can't jeopardize that. So we have to find an alternative setup to bring ICU type care to those patients. Reporting for News 5, I am Isanika Atano.